read each of them out loud. Okay, just read them? Just read them. Okay. So the first one is, you are not doing enough. Your mental health is not important. Just take care of everyone else. You are a broken person that barely anyone can stand. You'll never be anyone but just a mom. You're too weak and emotional. You don't give your children enough time and love. Your weight embarrasses your kids and you should have better style. No one will want you if you ever have to date again with a body like that. You were too hard on Flynn last night. You're going to scar her, she's just a kid. Hello. I'm Rebecca. I'm nice Nikki. to nice meet you. you. I'm Hannah. I'm Kieran. Nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. You could read out loud one of your cards mm. to Kieran. Okay. Mine says you should have done more. You can't be great at work or at home. You'll never be 100% at either. You'll always be mediocre. My body is so ugly now that I've had a baby. Oh, wow. <laughs> Aww. This is gonna make me cry. Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> Everybody will be better off without you. Sometimes I think that too, honestly. Sometimes I think I could just get in my car and leave and it would just be oh, so gosh. much better. Yes. With, they could just make it work without me. How did that feel reading your negative thoughts to another person? I feel like it's one thing to write them down for yourself and to accept them yourself, but to have somebody else hear them is totally different vulnerable and like I want to say these things out loud to yeah. someone yeah so that you can be like you're crazy <laughs> <laughs> and then be like no that's totally legit you know when you hear someone else talking about all the things that they do um, yeah. you know we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves you're perfect perfect just like you are <laughs> Cards in your hand. Oh, can I just rip them up now? <laughs> Should we rip them up? Can I can I get rid of them forever? <laughs> Mine are really thick. <laughs> Let the universe have them. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Woohoo! Hi, I'm with Katherine Winch, founder and CEO of the Mom Complex and author of Slay Like a Mother. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, I'm excited to be here. I am excited too. So we're gonna talk about Slay Like a Mother today. And I wanna know what motivated you? Why did you write this book? I wrote Slay Like a Mother because unfortunately for 20 years of my life from age 15 to 35, I lived with what I refer to as a dragon of self-doubt inside of me, meaning no matter what I accomplished on the outside, you know, career-wise, success, anything, it wasn't enough to fill me up on the inside. And I always was running, chasing, you know, just grabbing for a greater sense of self-worth. And it was really an exhausting way to live. And then fortunately, uh, when I was 35 years old, I had the opportunity through my job at the mom complex to study mothers in 17 countries around the world. And what my research revealed was that the number one emotions that the number one emotion that all moms have in common is self-doubt. And when I realized that through the research, I thought, oh, wait a second, I'm filled with doubt. All these other mothers are filled with doubt. Why are we not talking about the damn doubt? You know, and <laughs> why do we wear, wear masks and pretend like everything's perfect? And so uh, I went through two years of therapy and lots of self-help books, lots of red wine, lots of Oprah episodes. <laughs> and I healed myself on the inside and I learned to love myself finally. And now I want to help other women do the same thing. Well, I, well, this is just packed with good information and I love all the worksheets you have in here. And I think you have a PDF file too that mothers can download, but also this title is so clever and empowering. I, I just love it. Like 
like so cool. And I want to thank you for writing this because it really did help me as I was reading through it. I, I felt like, yeah, this is a journey I want to be on to fix the self-doubt in my head. Yeah. Well, you saying that is very rewarding to me because <laughs> It's the reason I never gave up. And even though I had healed myself mm -hmm. and I learned to turn my self-doubt into self-compassion, I felt called to help share these trade secrets. You know, I, I knew that what I learned and what I did would make a difference. Mm -hmm. But the proposal, the book proposal for Say Like a Mother was rejected for four years by 23 publishers. And so I just held out hope for mm -hmm. moments just like this, that some woman would say, I read your book and it really helped me. And people always ask like, how did you not give up? And I said, I just, I knew that it would help people. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm grateful that, that it has been. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're onto something here. And I want to talk a little bit about what it's like living with, you know, this dragon that you talk about. Living with a dragon of self-doubt is exhausting and it's, usually filled with a lot of negative self-talk, you know, and maybe anybody watching is familiar that this negative voice in your head is always saying, you're not thin enough, nice enough, tough enough, mom enough, sister enough, daughter enough, you know, all the things. And, and we hear that soundtrack all day, every day, and it wears you down and it wears you out. And I started to feel like I was just on this treadmill. I was working hard. I was trying my best, mm -hmm. but something inside of me wouldn't let me accept that it was my best. Yeah. And so, you know, exhausting is the, the, mm -hmm. the main you know, word that, that comes to mind. And, and some women say, I don't know if I have time to read a self-help book. I don't know if I have time to work on myself enough. And I always say, well, that just means you're not broken enough. <laughs> because I was so broken and so tired. There's my puppy sneaking out. I was so broken and I was so tired that I really felt like I had no choice but to heal myself, so. Yeah, so do you remember the exact moment that you realized that you had this dragon inside of you that you needed, that you needed to slay? I do remember that moment and it happened on my therapist's couch and I, I can't recommend therapy enough. I think everybody should have a therapist. And um, my therapist asked me to write down the last terrible thing that I had said to myself. And this was probably eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I thought about it and I took out a piece of paper and I wrote down something that I had said to myself that day. Mm -hmm. And the sentiment was, and I quote, <laughs> you are a poor excuse for a strong woman. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me want to cry even to this day thinking about it because when that's what you believe about yourself, that's a really long day, right? Mm -hmm. When you think that you wake up in the morning and you go to bed at night thinking you're a poor excuse for a strong woman is a crappy way to, to live. And so as my therapist taught me, you know, we have to say these things out loud. We have to write them down. And it was the, the moment that I realized I had a dragon of self-doubt was when I saw those words in my own handwriting. Yeah. And I thought, I can no longer deny that something's off, that something's wrong. And, you know, and I just became determined to fix it. Well, kudos to you that you recognize that. Um, yeah, so then, so you talk about giving yourself grace and being your biggest advocate. And when I read that, that was like an aha moment for me. So can you talk about the importance of those two elements? Absolutely. I think when it comes to giving ourselves grace, we have to remember that as mothers, we're often rookies. So for example, I have a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. And while I have been a mother for 14 years, I have been the mother to teenagers for a matter of days. And when I remind myself of that, it helps me give myself grace. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't stop to do that and pause and remind yourself that you're a rookie, that you are new at it, then what happens is you say to yourself, come on, Catherine, you know, what's wrong with you? You've been a mother for 14 years. When are you going to get your shit together? And it's just this negative, you know, soundtrack that runs in your mind. And so I think we have to remind ourselves that we're new 
at something. And one very tangible way that I do this that I'll share, and it, it plays into the, the second point that you asked about is whenever I'm going through a hard time, I write on a post-it note. I expect this to be hard. And I literally, this is on my computer right here in like front that. of my face. <laughs> and so, you know, living through a global pandemic, trying to raise teenagers, whatever it is that might be new to you in your life, this is where you can give yourself grace by reminding yourself that whoever said raising teenagers was easy. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. And so then what happens is when life is hard, you see your post-it note and you go, Oh, that's right. I expected this to be hard, as opposed to saying, this is hard and therefore I suck. And that's what we have to prevent is just that negative, you know, spiraling. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree with that because I think my dragon came when I became a mother and I didn't know that it was hard until I was going through it. And if I would have had a post-it note telling me that expect this to be hard, I probably would have given myself a little bit of grace. Yeah, I, I felt the same way as you, Annie. And it's, um, you know, I didn't hear when I became a mother, you know, 14 years ago, I didn't hear at the time other mothers saying it was hard. I, I hadn't heard my own mother say it was hard. I was very close with both of my grandmothers. I never heard them say it was hard. Mm -hmm. And so I therefore assumed that it was supposed to be easy. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully this can be encouragement for women and mothers everywhere to speak your truth, mm -hmm. to talk about your struggles, because when you talk about your struggles, two things happen. One, they have less power over you because you're giving them voice, you're identifying them. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is it helps other mothers. <laughs> it helps other mothers see, oh, she's having a hard time. I'm having a hard time too. Therefore, I must be normal instead of, therefore, I must suck. Yeah, exactly. And this whole notion of being your biggest advocate, I, I, so I'm in PR and I'm other people's advocates, but am I my own? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a hard thing to grasp. Yeah, it is. And, and sometimes it can be easier to grasp the, the negative side than the positive or the lack of negative, I should say, in the sense that you know, we throw this term around all the time. Oh, you know me, I'm my own worst enemy. Ha ha ha. You know, and we, we laugh about that, but it's really not funny at all to think about what that really means that my greatest enemy on this planet is myself. And so if you're not to the point yet that you can be your biggest advocate, if you still struggle with that, then at least you can move away from the negative of not being your own worst enemy. So that leap, you know, that takes time. It's a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. But at least if you can wake up every day and not be your greatest enemy, yes. that's going to be a better day. Yes, I agree. I agree. Now I want to talk about going back to children and how do we raise our own children to be these dragon slayers? That's a great question. And the final chapter in Slay Like a Mother is actually titled Raising Dragon Slayers. And one tip that I would share is that if you want to raise children that are free from dragons, they have to feel comfortable and have permission to talk about the hard things in their life and the bad things in their life. Because what I have learned from my research is that dragons of self-doubt thrive in silence and darkness and avoidance. So if we pretend the bad things aren't there, they get bigger. But if we can give our children the voice and the platform and the opportunity and the space to have bad days, to have bad moments, and a, a really quick tip for that can be um, something that I've done for years with my kids, and that is we share our peak and our pit from the day. So the best part of our day and what was the worst part of our day. And what that will teach your children is that everyone has a bad part of their day even their mother, and that they should expect that every single day, something's going to suck, something's going to be bad. And if they can learn to give voice to that, then it won't stay inside of their soul. But unfortunately, so many of us 
live in households where perfection is idealized, right? And it's, let's just talk about the good things and let's sweep the bad things under the carpet. So if you can invite your children to share the hard parts of their life, it will keep that dragon at bay. That, that's very good advice. I, I agree with you. I love it. Um, so I wanted to say, where can we buy Slay Like a Mother? Slay Like a Mother is available everywhere books are sold, uh, Amazon, Walmart, Target, and it's also available on Audible. So if you find yourself a busy mom and you want to multitask, you can listen to Slay Like a Mother on Audible and um, it's my voiceover reading it. So I can read you your bedtime stories about dragons if you like. <laughs> I love it. You have such a soothing voice. I'll, I would love to listen to it. But the other one other thing is, what do you want your readers to take away from this book? If you could say one thing, what would it be? I want women to take away from Slay Like a Mother that you are not at war with other mothers. You are at war with yourself. And that is the war. That is the battle. And I am living proof that that battle can be won. Mm -hmm. And so if I can do it, then you can do it too. Well, thank you so much. You have wonderful advice and I really appreciate you being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Go buy it. <laughs>